listening test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. You will hear a man, Martin Hill, phoning an estate agent in order to find some accommodation. First, you have some time to look at questions one to three. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hello, Brindle's estate agents here. How may I help you? Oh, good morning. I'm ringing to see what flats you have for rent at the moment. Right. Martin wants to rent a flat, so B has been circled as the answer. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen. Listen carefully and answer questions one to three. Hello, Brindle's estate agents here. How may I help you? Oh, good morning. I'm ringing to see what flats you have for rent at the moment. Right. Can I start by just taking your name, Mr. Um... Hill, Martin Hill. Right. And are you looking for a flat for yourself or、um, a family, perhaps? Well, it's for three of us, myself and two friends. We're going to share together. I see.、Um, what about employment? Are you all students? Oh no, we've all got full-time jobs. Two of us work in the central bank. That's Chris and me, and Phil, that's the other one, is working for Hallam Cars. You know, at the factory about two miles out of town. I'll put you down as young professionals then. And I suppose you'll be looking for somewhere with three bedrooms. Yeah, at least three. But actually, we'd rather have a fourth room as well if we can afford it, for friends staying over and stuff. Is that with a living room to share, plus kitchen and bathroom? Yeah, that sounds good. But we must have a bathroom with a shower. We don't mind about having a bath, but the shower's crucial. Okay, I'll just key that in. And are you interested in any particular area? Well, the city centre would be good for me and Chris, so that's our first preference. But we'd consider anything in the west suburbs as well, really. Actually, for Phil, that'd be better, but <laughs> he knows he's outnumbered. <laughs> but we aren't interested in the north or the east of the city. Okay, I'm just getting up all the flats on our books. Now you have some time to look at questions four to ten. Now listen and answer questions four to ten. Just looking at this list here, I'm afraid there are only two that might interest you. Do you want the details? Okay, let me just grab a pen and some paper. Fire away. This first one I'm looking at is in Bridge Street and very close to the bus station. It's not often that flats in that area come up for rent. This one's got three bedrooms, a bathroom and kitchen, of course, and a very big living room. That sounds a good size for you. Hmm. So, what about the rent? How much is it a month? The good news is that it's only four hundred and fifty pounds a month. Rents in that area usually reach up to six fifty a month, but the landlord obviously wants to get a tenant quickly. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of a bargain. What about transport for Phil? Well, there'll be plenty of buses, so no problem for him to use public transport. Uh, but unfortunately, there isn't a shower in the flat.
And that location is likely to be noisy, of course. OK. What about the other place? Let's see. Oh, yes. Well, this one is in a really nice location, on Hills Avenue. I'm sure you know it. This looks like something a bit special. It's got four big bedrooms and, um, there's a big living room. And, oh, this will be good for you, a dining room. It sounds enormous, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds great. That whole area is being developed and the flat's very modern, which I'm sure you'll like. It's got good facilities, including your shower. And, of course, it's going to be quiet, especially compared with the other place. Better and better. But I'll bet it's expensive, especially if it's in that trendy area beside the park. Mm, I'm afraid so. They're asking £800 a month for it. Whoa! It sounds a lot more than we can afford. Well, maybe you could get somebody else to move in too. I'll tell you what. Give me your address and I can send you all the details and photos. And you can see whether these two are worth a visit. Thanks. That would be really helpful. My address is flat five. Now listen again. Hello, Brindle's estate agents here. How may I help you? Oh, good morning. I'm ringing to see what flats you have for rent at the moment. Right. Can I start by just taking your name, Mr... Um... Hill. Martin Hill. Right. And are you looking for a flat for yourself or um, a family, perhaps? Well, it's for three of us, myself and two friends. We're going to share together. I see. Um, what about employment? Are you all students? Oh, no. We've all got full-time jobs. Two of us work in the central bank, that's Chris and me, and Phil, that's the other one, is working for Hallam Cars, you know, at the factory about two miles out of town. I'll put you down as young professionals then. And I suppose you'll be looking for somewhere with three bedrooms? Yeah, at least three. But actually, we'd rather have a fourth room as well, if we can afford it, for friends staying over and stuff. Is that with a living room to share, plus kitchen and bathroom? Yeah, that sounds good. But we must have a bathroom with a shower. We don't mind about having a bath, but the shower's crucial. OK, I'll just key that in. And are you interested in any particular area? Well, the city centre would be good for me and Chris, so that's our first preference. But we'd consider anything in the west suburbs as well, really. Actually, for Phil, that'd be better, but <laughs> he knows he's outnumbered. <laughs> But we aren't interested in the north or the east of the city. OK. I'm just getting up all the flats on our books. Now you have some time to look at questions 4 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 4 to 10. Just looking at this list here, I'm afraid there are only two that might interest you. Do you want the details? OK, let me just grab a pen and some paper. Fire away. This first one I'm looking at is in Bridge Street and very close to the bus station. It's not often that flats in that area come up for rent. This one's got three bedrooms, a bathroom and kitchen, of course, and a very big living room. That sounds a good size for you. Hmm. So what about the rent? How much is it a month? The good news is that it's only £450 a month. Rents in that area usually reach up to 650 a month. But the landlord obviously wants to get a tenant quickly. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of a bargain. What about transport for Phil? Well, there'll be plenty of buses, so no problem for him to use public transport. Uh, but unfortunately, there isn't a shower in the flat. And that location is likely to be noisy, of course. OK. What about the other place? Let's see. 
Oh, yes. Well, this one is in a really nice location, on Hills Avenue. I'm sure you know it. This looks like something a bit special. It's got four big bedrooms and, um, there's a big living room. And, oh, this will be good for you, a dining room. It sounds enormous, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds great. That whole area is being developed and the flat's very modern, which I'm sure you'll like. It's got good facilities, including your shower. And, of course, it's going to be quiet, especially compared with the other place. Better and better. But I'll bet it's expensive, especially if it's in that trendy area beside the park. Mm, I'm afraid so. They're asking £800 a month for it. Whoa! It sounds a lot more than we can afford. Well, maybe you could get somebody else to move in too. I'll tell you what. Give me your address and I can send you all the details and photos. And you can see whether these two are worth a visit. Thanks. That would be really helpful. My address is flat five. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now look at part two. You will hear a radio interview with a ballet dancer called Elena Karpov, who is talking about her life and career. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. My guest today is the star of the London Ballet Company, 22-year-old Elena Karpov. Elena, you were born in Bulgaria. Did you always want to be a dancer? Well, I was a very lively little girl, so at the age of seven, my mother sent me to gymnastics classes. When I was nine, I went on to ballet lessons, and from that moment I knew that I wanted to spend my life dancing. Two years later, when I was 11, I won a place at the New York Ballet School. So you had to move to the United States. Mm. Did you miss your family? Oh, yes. At first it was difficult being away from home and not knowing a lot of English, but it taught me how to look after myself and not to depend on others. There were other Bulgarian students there, and we actually found it quite easy to learn enough English to take part in the lessons with the other students. Hmm. Tell us about your latest role with the London Ballet Company. Hmm. I'm going to dance the part of Cinderella. It's a story about a poor girl who marries a handsome prince. My parents used to read it to me when I was little. I'd never seen the ballet before, but I already knew the music really well. I'm sure children will love the ballet. What do you do when you're not practising or performing? Uh, before I joined this company, I spent two weeks going round London as a tourist. I don't have time for sightseeing now, but I love trying on the latest fashions with my friends. I'm always buying new jeans and trainers. I'm not too keen on discos and nightclubs. I dance enough during the day. You must have lots of fans. Quite a few. They always ask for a photograph of me, but unfortunately I don't have many to give away. I sometimes sign their programmes instead, and if I can, I give them one of the flowers I've received from the audience. They always ask for tickets, <laughs> but of course that's not possible. What's been the best thing that's happened in your career so far? 
Well, I've been a guest dancer with ballet companies in Moscow and Vienna, and I appeared twice on television in Bulgaria and met the president. I shall never forget that. But the most satisfying thing for me is that I'm paid for doing what I really enjoy, dancing. Helena, thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Now listen again. My guest today is the star of the London Ballet Company, 22-year-old Elena Karpov. Elena, you were born in Bulgaria. Did you always want to be a dancer? Well, I was a very lively little girl, so at the age of seven, my mother sent me to gymnastics classes. When I was nine, I went on to ballet lessons, and from that moment I knew that I wanted to spend my life dancing. Two years later, when I was 11, I won a place at the New York Ballet School. So you had to move to the United States. Mm. Did you miss your family? Oh, yes. At first it was difficult being away from home and not knowing a lot of English, but it taught me how to look after myself and not to depend on others. There were other Bulgarian students there and we actually found it quite easy to learn enough English to take part in the lessons with the other students. Mm. Tell us about your latest role with the London Ballet Company. Mm. I'm going to dance the part of Cinderella. It's a story about a poor girl who marries a handsome prince. My parents used to read it to me when I was little. I'd never seen the ballet before, but I already knew the music really well. I'm sure children will love the ballet. What do you do when you're not practising or performing? Uh, before I joined this company, I spent two weeks going round London as a tourist. I don't have time for sightseeing now, but I love trying on the latest fashions with my friends. I'm always buying new jeans and trainers. I'm not too keen on discos and nightclubs. I dance enough during the day. You must have lots of fans. Quite a few. They always ask for a photograph of me, but unfortunately I don't have many to give away. I sometimes sign their programmes instead. And if I can, I give them one of the flowers I've received from the audience. They always ask for tickets, but of course that's not possible. What's been the best thing that's happened in your career so far? Well, I've been a guest dancer with ballet companies in Moscow and Vienna, and I appeared twice on television in Bulgaria and met the president. I shall never forget that. But the most satisfying thing for me is that I'm paid for doing what I really enjoy, dancing. Helena, thank you for talking to us. Thank you. That is the end of part two. Now look at part three. You will hear two friends, a boy, Rolf, and a girl, Maria, talking about the jobs they would like to do in the future. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. What do you want to do when you leave college, Rolf? I haven't decided yet, Maria. I might go travelling for six months and then look for a job. How about you? I hope to start work straight away. Do you know where? Well, I'd prefer to live near my family, but I want to see the world too, so I'd hope to have plenty of trips for work. You could get a job with an airline company. Mm, that'd be great, but it's hard to get into. I know lots of people apply for that kind of work, but you're good at languages. I'm sure they'd accept you. I hope so. Have you really not decided what job you'd like? It's difficult. 
My degree's in music, but I definitely don't want to be a music teacher. I'll probably look for something completely different. Oh, that's a shame. Why not become a music teacher? You'd get long holidays. But if I got a job in business, I could earn far more money. Lots of people say money doesn't matter, and you should just find a job you enjoy. But I think a job has to pay well, so you can live comfortably. Hmm, that's exactly how I see it. Do you think you'll have lots of different jobs before you find a really good one? I expect so. No one finds the perfect job immediately. I'd like to find a job I really like and stay with the same company for at least ten years. Oh, I see. Well, that's interesting. Your father has his own business, doesn't he? Yes, but I don't want to work for him. But he could help you set up your own business.、Oh, I couldn't imagine doing that. I know how many hours my father has to work.、Hmm. Your free time's important to you, isn't it? <laughs> it certainly is. Right. <laughs>、Now、listen again. What do you want to do when you leave college, Rolf? I haven't decided yet, Maria. I might go travelling for six months and then look for a job. How about you? I hope to start work straight away. Do you know where? Well, I'd prefer to live near my family, but I want to see the world too. So I'd hope to have plenty of trips for work. You could get a job with an airline company. Hmm, that'd be great, but it's hard to get into. I know lots of people apply for that kind of work, but you're good at languages. I'm sure they'd accept you. I hope so. Have you really not decided what job you'd like? It's difficult. My degree's in music, but I definitely don't want to be a music teacher. I'll probably look for something completely different. Oh, that's a shame. Why not become a music teacher? You'd get long holidays. But if I got a job in business, I could earn far more money. Lots of people say money doesn't matter, and you should just find a job you enjoy. But I think a job has to pay well, so you can live comfortably. Hmm, that's exactly how I see it. Do you think you'll have lots of different jobs before you find a really good one? I expect so. No one finds the perfect job immediately. I'd like to find a job I really like and stay with the same company for at least ten years. Oh, I see. Well, that's interesting. Your father has his own business, doesn't he? Yes, but I don't want to work for him. But he could help you set up your own business.、Oh, I couldn't imagine doing that. I know how many hours my father has to work. Hmm. Your free time's important to you, isn't it? It certainly is. Right. <laughs> That is the end of the test.